Welcome to episode 7 of my Detroit Red Wings franchise mode series. If you haven't checked out the other episodes, please go do so right now. If you need a reminder, this is going to be a more realistic franchise, so I am only allowed to offer trades I think are realistic. I can't accept trades from the AI even if I think they are not realistic because some GMs offer really dumb trades. I'm not allowed to trade people I sign in free agency until they are in their last or second to last year of their contract. You see the lines on the screen, Larkin, McKinnon, Sedina, line one, Raymond, Cobb, Soderblom, line two, all getting that plus one, Verana, Marco Casper makes the team, he's an 81 medium elite on line three, Beauvillier there as well, and then Perron, Fabry, and Jack Drury, so the forward depth isn't quite as good as it's been, but it's still really solid. Defense, we've got Edvins and Sider, top pair, Dumba, Hironik, second pair, and Lindstrom and Broberg on that third pair. And goal, we've got Villahuso, and Justice Anunit is going to be the backup, though... Halfway through the season, that could become Sebastian Kosa's job. So here are our player overalls and contracts. McKinnon still has that long-term massive deal. Still super happy I got him. Please pause at any moment if you would like to see. There's a couple guys that we can almost trade, including Andrew Kopp. We have some cheap players here, as you see. Ben Chirot is finally eligible to be traded. He is 7th D potential, 80 overall, and 2 years left, so because he has 2 years left on his deal, I can get rid of him. Here are the goalies, contracts, and potentials. You'll see Kosa is actually better than Anunin currently, which is why I said he's probably going to be the backup at some point. But I want him to start the year in Grand Rapids and just get a lot of playing time in. And you'll see here the biggest change I've made from the first two seasons is that injuries are on. I haven't turned down low, so we'll see how often they occur. This one occurred in the second game of the season, though, so it might be a really common thing. Let me know if you think I should keep injuries on or turn them off for future seasons. We have another injury here. Matt Dumba out with an injured knee. So the one thing that sucks about injuries is the coach does not automatically put the best lines in for you even though you click best lines like I want Zadina and Raymond to switch here so these guys get their plus one and I don't want line four to have a minus one when you can make a simple switch like this and injuries are happening very very often so I'm gonna keep them on for the rest of this year but again please please let me know if I should keep them on for the future Simone Edvinson out with injury Robbie Fabry out with injury, Moritz Sider out with injury. I'm just going best lines every time. I do not have the time to go in and edit it manually every single injury. Oli Mata is on waivers, no way. Two years, 1.3 million a year. He's only a 79 overall though. He's gone down, so we're not gonna take him back. And we have so many injuries that we need to call up people from the AHL. Fabry back. Maritz Sider is back. I don't think I'm going to be showing you guys all the injuries from here on out just because there is an absurd amount of them. I don't think I'm going to be showing you guys all the injuries from here on out because there is an absurd amount of them. So a couple of months into the season, we are 12, 10, and 1, and we are not in the playoffs. Larkin leading the way with 22 points in 23 games. McKinnon with 20. Andrew Kopp with 17. Please pause if you would like to see everybody's point totals. I see Broberg is a minus 11. That is uh, kind of bad. We have a pretty interesting trade offer here. Two thirds in our first round pick, Ryan Ness, for Zach Whitecloud, who's signed to what could be a team friendly deal depending on his overall. So let's see what his overall is. 82 overall, Zach Whitecloud. This seems like a pretty fair trade here. Vegas looks to be more in a rebuild at, with their losing record. White Cloud is 28 years old, so he's going to be solid. And an 82 overall defenseman at that price is really, really good. Ness is, I really don't want to give Ness up, but to get a top four defenseman who's a solidified top four D-man and just swapping some picks seems like something we need to do with our record right now. So let's see what they say. Rejected. Let's try it for just with the fourth. Still rejected. I wanted to negotiate with them. They're being hard on their original offer, so we're gonna take that deal. Zach Whitecloud, welcome to the Detroit Red Wings. Massive trade just happened. Philadelphia gets Jared McCann. Seattle gets Provorov, a second and a third. I think McCann's definitely a better player, but that second and third might have made Seattle win that deal. 
Tyler Madden got placed on waivers. He's a low top six. I just checked he's an 80 overall, so we're definitely gonna claim him. That's really good free value there. So here we are at the trade deadline. We are 32, 29, and one. We have 65 points. We're just barely out of a playoff spot. The injuries have absolutely been destroying this team. We went on a long losing streak because Larkin and Raymond were both injured at the same time. McKinnon leading the way, 58 points, 57 games. Larkin with 56, after that it drops off quite a bit. Raymond, it feels like, is constantly hurt, comes back and then gets hurt again. Some huge minuses on this team, oh my goodness. Ferran is a minus 32. Please pause if you'd like to see the stats. Justice Anunin's only played in nine games, but he's been great. Huso's been okay. I'm entering the trade deadline as a conservative buyer. We are very mediocre, so we'll see what happens. Thomas Shabbat available, four years left on his deal. He's still young, that wouldn't be a bad guy to get. Chi Theodore is going to be a rental for somebody. O'Reilly's value has gone way down and he's not worth that money. Chikrin still stuck in Arizona. Maybe this is the time he finally gets out, but he's down to a low top four. Bertuzzi on the Canes. I, I thought that contract would be bad. That's why we didn't keep him. Four years, 8.5 million a year. We already have a trade alert. The Islanders trade to Foley and Zadorov. Interesting. Saad, Robin Leonard, Adam Henrik, some aging guys, Bob and Blake Wheeler. The Bruins want to get rid of the rats and I don't want them. I have a one for one trade here. Verona has really struggled for us this year. He's like a minus 30. Krejci is an 86 overall. Verona is an 84. The Capitals win this trade long term if Verona gets back on track, but I'm trying to make the team better right now. Let's see what they have to say. Trade is rejected. I'm adding Lombardi to the deal. That's the medium top nine prospect. And the trade's accepted. The Red Wings have acquired David Krejci. Jonathan March is an 84 overall expiring contract. Let's see if we can get him. So we're offering them Vero, Johnson, two decent prospects that might make it one day. March or so is probably not going to resign in Minnesota based on their record. Let's see what they say. Trades rejected. Added on another fifth. And that trade will be accepted and Ben Chirot will be on waivers. So I have a massive trade offer here as the Ducks for some reason want to get rid of Aaron Kibi Haru. He's a medium elite 62 overall. I'm also throwing Zellweger in the deal. He was great for Team Canada and the World Juniors, the most recent World Juniors. He's only a high top 6D. I don't really expect, expect him to make it, but we'll see. I'm offering Ryan McLeod, who's gonna help make their team better right now. Ben Sherratt with salary retained. He's also gonna make their team better right now. Second round pick. And unfortunately, jo Jonathan Bergeron is now 24 years old and he's only a 78. I held on to him for so long, saying I wanted him to be a big part of the future and then he hasn't just panned out, and let's see what they say. Rejected. Trying to throw in David Perron here. It sucks that I'd have to retain Sherratt for an extra season, but it would totally be worth it. Perron has been solid for us, but if it's gonna get Kibi Haru, we're in that weird middle ground where I've changed the team around, so hopefully that helps improve it, but then hopefully this trade also helps improve us for the future. Still rejected. So I've switched it up quite a bit. Sharat, Bergeron, and Perron, plus a second and a fourth for Aaron Kibi Haru. Trade value is way on the duck side, but I think it'll still be worth it. Let's see what they say. Still rejected, so we're gonna give up on this trade then. So I am gonna exit the deadline now and sim to the rest of the season. Hopefully we squeak into the playoffs. Joel Erickson Eck is now a member of the New York Islanders for a second and a third. There's our trade for March or so. Freddie Goodrow to Chicago, Danton Heinen. Minnesota gets Musty. Tanner Pearson to Toronto for Topi Niemela. Blake Coleman to Dallas for Essa Lindell. That's a pretty big one. Brett Pesci to Vancouver, towards Verona back to Washington where it all began. Chandler Stevenson and Nick Waugh to Buffalo is pretty big. Xavier Borgo to New Jersey for Obey Kubel, New Jersey definitely won that trade. Brock Nelson to Columbus for must be Jonathan Drouin. Leo Carlson to the Islanders. He's lighting up the SHL this year. Lucas Reichel is actually on waivers. I just checked, he's a 79 low top six. I'm surprised he's only low top six, but we're definitely claiming him. 